Welcome back to Community Battlecast Prime Time. Doom Tanker here. We've got your official update on the TA World Championship as well as news from around the community and not to mention your mods, your Battlecast, and the winners of the fan art contest. So let's get to it. Some of this news is a little old, but we wanted to update you guys on various projects. Originally, we were going to open our news segment with a very old update on the Tiberium Alliance World Championship, but that's already over with, so let's do a quick recap. On March 23rd, NVIDIA was the first alliance to defeat the Forgotten Fortress. However, on May 18th, the second place spot was claimed by NVIDIA and Force Alliance. A big congratulations to both of the alliances who have been able to break through the Forgotten. On the 23rd of May, the Tiberium Alliance team celebrated their two-year anniversary by giving away free TA funds to all. During their two-year anniversary week, Game Replays also launched their Ask a Developer contest. Game Replays was collecting community questions, and the answers are up, so be sure to check those out. Many of you are probably also aware that the multiplayer servers for the CNC games that were hosted by GameSpy are now offline. The future of the servers have been in question for some time, but the incredible team over at Revora.net have been working to reverse engineer the functionality provided by the GameSpy servers. So if you want to learn more about playing Generals, Zero Hour, Tiberium Wars, Kane's Wrath, and Red Alert 3 online, then check out the instructional video made by Cyber, or visit the website at cnc-online.net. Do remember that CNC Online is not 100% done, and while it does work, you may encounter bugs. Most of you probably know, and you all should know, that Renegade X was released to open beta back in February. In late March, they released the Open Beta 2, their first post-launch game update. They've also featured some footage of the first community match between TMX and EKT. We here at Battlecast Primetime have been excited for this for a long time, and we know we aren't alone. So be sure to hit up their website for the latest information. If you want a sneak peek at upcoming releases, you can also follow RenegadeX on Facebook and Twitter for cryptic teasers. As a final note, the word on the street that Open Beta 3 is near release. OpenRA, the community project that brings classic CNC and Dune action to a modern era, has recently released a new playtest version that features bug fixes, balance tweaks, and improves the lobby and replay interface. This is still a work in progress project, but it's one that you can pretty easily get involved with and have a lot of fun to play. Now this is something that's been around for over a year and a half, but it's still pretty cool. A browser version of CNC95. No, it's not a crappy Flash version. It's the original game running on HTML5. Created by Idiot Ravid Shakaran, and I'm sorry if I butchered your name. <laughs> I am really sorry. The project is intended as a technical proof of concept to demonstrate the basic working elements of an RTS game in HTML5. So if you got Chrome, Opera, Safari, or Firefox, you're good to go with playing some CNC on your browser. Sorry, Internet Explorer, you still suck. And now it's time for the mod spotlight. We got another batch of mods for you guys, so let's dig in. Back on February 5th, Infinity Realms, the guys behind RA3 Paradox, announced that they would be ceasing development on the mod. In their official announcement on their mod DB page, Paradox the mod is done. The overriding read is and is simply out of our control. The RNA engine is unworkable. It fights us at every turn. The team sat down on a Skype call and we started talking about what we were going to do about this. We love CNC, we love Red Alert, and we love Paradox, but we couldn't keep beating our heads against the wall. They've also been making the art assets that they created for Paradox mod available as a resource to other modders. It's sad to see this mod go, but we wish these guys the best of luck if they decide to create a new independent game. You can read the full statement in the link below. Our next mod is Command & Conquer Untitled, a mod for General Zero Hour. Now if you remember the first time we covered Untitled, you've been watching for a long time. While Untitled is certainly not a total conversion, it does bring a host of changes to the classic title. From new maps, models, textures, audio, new units, and balancing changes. If you're a fan of Zero Hour, we can recommend that you, at the very least, check out this mod. Give it a shot. Who knows? You may enjoy it more than the original. Next up is Tiberium History, a mod for Tiberium Wars that reminds us a bit of the Jeep Ruby Project Regenesis, which we covered long ago. While there is some overlap between the two mods, there definitely seems to be more differences than similarities once you dive into it. It's not finished, but its current release 5 is functional for play, and they've recently posted new updates indicating release 6 is on the way. Many of you are familiar with the standalone Tib Sun mod, Twisted Insurrection. You may know that Public Beta 5 launched not too long ago. 
Public Beta 5 adds support for Win 8, new maps and missions, and over 1,300 changes. Yes, 1,300. I know a lot of people love Tibbs Sun out there, so this one is definitely worth a check out if you wanted to see what would happen if the original Tiberian Dawn ended the opposite way with Nod winning. Yeah, like it like it should have had. Peace Mission is a mod for General Zero Hour that adds new units, factions, and buildings. Currently in beta, so you can play it, but just know that you will find bugs. If you're looking to spice up your Zero Hour gameplay, you may want to check this out at the least. Keep it on your radar for when it's a bit more polished. The latest version of the mod was released July 23rd of this year, so hopefully that indicates more changes soon. This is technically a follow-up since we've covered Xenoforce Reborn long ago. While there hasn't been an update for this mod since 2.1, one, there's still a ton of changes that were made to Tiv Wars to change it this much. We may have some reservation about the balance of the game, and if you like comp stomping in CNC3, then check this one out. Wait, we really have not covered this one? We have to have already covered upheaval. How could we have not? Well, anyways, for those of you who don't know, RA3 Upheaval is a mod that brings all the units' maps from Uprising into RA3, which means if you ever wanted to have some one-on-one -on -one action with the silliness of Uprising, well, you can. This mod definitely isn't for everyone, but if you're into giant flying robot heads that shoot lasers, then it's worth the checking out. To top off our mod segment, we're going to be checking in once again with Metal Omega, Almost Perfect Yuri's Revenge, which is currently in need of map scripters. The Mental Omega team already has 54 total missions completed. For Act 2, they're looking to add another 36 missions, including more co-op missions, and need a scripter to help them do it. If you're interested in helping out with this incredible mod, then hit the link below and apply. This is Cybert, and welcome to the Battlecast 10. Game 1 takes us to the front line in Zero Hour with Red Chill as the Nuke China and Detox as the Toxin GLA. An early strike force for Detox hits the right side of the map while Dragon Tanks look for an opening but get shut down. Red Chill is tired of being pushed around the map by Detox's forces and decides to go for a propaganda center and finally get those Overlord tanks. As Red starts to make progress, Jarmin Kell locks down the attack all too easily. Both players chase each other around the map playing whack-a-mole for 20 minutes as neither player can gain a clear enough advantage to take the win. In the end, it's a close game, but Detox is too strong, and with Toxin Rebel ambushes, Detox drowns out Red Chill. We're moving to Tiberium Wars for Game 2 with a Nod Mirror from the Goodbye Game Spy 1v1 tournament hosted by GameReplays.org. This is Game 1 from the finals and we've got Maze in the top left versus Shock Trepet in the bottom right. Shock Trepet opens with a Shadow Team Rush, which locks down the War Factory before getting shot up by Shredder Turrets. Both players build up to Dual War Factory and Shock Trepet goes for some Bike Harass that gets shut down by Scorpions. Maze goes on the offensive and takes the fight to his opponent, but Shock Trepet holds the line while counterattacking with his remaining shadow teams and bringing in more bikes. Both players sell their MCVs for the cash boost and nearly kill each other off, but they both manage to survive. Maze refuses to build bikes for stealth detection so he can't efficiently kill off Shock Trepet's harvesters. I mean, when your stealth detection method is infantry, you might want to rethink your strategy. By the power of flanking, counterattacking, and distracting with bikes, as well as long distance harvesting, Shock Trepet manages to take down Maze and take the win. Game 3 takes us to Kane's Wrath on Unsound Investment in a 2v2. With Dirty Dutch as the Nod and Unleashed as the Marked of Kane on the top side, versus Panic, Steel Talons, and Andre Blackhand in the bottom. It's eco oriented openers all around, which means harvester hunting is the name of the game as both teams try to gain the lead. Unleashed goes for a multi-MCV Redeemer base push while Andre creates waves of Scorpion tanks. Unleashed starts to move in, but the combined forces of the Southern team is too much. Game transitions into a giant slugfest as both teams hammer each other, but slowly and surely Andre and Panic push their way across the map. Both teams are waist-deep in carnage for minutes on end as solid streams of epic units and support units are wasted in the name of victory. As Andre and Panic push their way from one section of the map to the next, Dirty Dutch and Unleashed manage barely to hold the line with defensive and mass EMP. It's a scrappy last few minutes as both sides come close to defeat, but in the end, Dirty Dutch and Unleashed are victorious. 
We're in Forgotten Forest for Game 4 for something unusual, a 2v1. It's Marked of Cain Bishop and Traveler 59 Jake White versus Zocom Phoenix, aka Steve Nash number 13. Phoenix goes for a triple ref crane expand, while Bishop goes for standard expansion timing, and Jake drops two gravity stabilizers for Storm Riders. The double team pokes in and does some damage, but it's not enough to cripple Phoenix as he texts to Amar. Phoenix pushes out his epic unit while taking the center field in the north. Phoenix gets beaten back and his Marv goes down, but he buys enough time to rebuild his Marv before the double team can move out. Jake White finally manages to clean up Phoenix's main base and pushes south as Bishop uses stealth tanks and his Redeemer to attack from the west. With the use of support powers and base defenses, Phoenix manages to hold the line. Attack after attack is unleashed upon Phoenix, but he manages to stand strong against the odds. That is until the planetary assault carriers arrive. Bishop's nuclear missile also signals the end of the match for Phoenix as the double team takes home the win. Game 5 takes us to a 5-player FFA on Tiberium Gardens 3. We've got Skrin Kill All playing as Nod, Marked of Kane Command Akankas, Traveler 59 Master Leaf, Zocom Hanfix, and Syndrom playing as Nod. It's standard openers all around as most players are looking to tech up early. Master Leaf goes for the Prodigy and starts harassing Syndrom, while Hanfix goes for a Marv in the center field. Skrin Kill All's Redeemer forces Command Akanka out of the game early. Master Leaf tries to gimmick Syndrome to death, but it doesn't quite work out, so he goes for a Hexapod and stomps all over Syndrome, forcing him out of the game as well. Screen Kill All decides it's time to kill all the Screen and attacks Master Leaf, but to no avail. With no clear leader, the game lurches to a stalemate and each player bunkers up hard with Static D. It's an absolute slugfest as epic unit after epic unit goes down, but Hanfix overcommits with his hammerheads and they get trashed. He sells off, leaving Master Leaf and Screen Kill all. It's a battle of artillery and air superiority as Master Leaf and Screen Kill All sledge each other with seemingly no end. Slowly, Master Leaf carves a path through the Nod Maze to victory. Game 6 is on the classic Tournament Rift with Traveler 59 Swag Don Dada versus GDI Master Leaf. And I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure Swag Don Dada is dirty Dutch. Don Dada opens with fast leg disintegrators and a triple engineer. After grabbing both of the spikes, Don Dada decides to donate his disintegrators to the desperate GDI Rifleman. I have no idea why. Master Leaf grabs back the southern spikes, holds off some attacks, and then takes the middle field as his third base. Don Dada needs to even the score before Master Leaf gets too far ahead, and he does just that as he locks down Master Leaf's Marv and pushes the GDI forces away from the center field but not completely away. Master Leaf manages to hold on to the center with use of riflemen, zone troopers, and the armory. Don Dada just can't break through the infantry-heavy forces of Master Leaf, and in the end, Master Leaf takes the win. It's on to Red Alert 3 for Dan Call versus Latex on Industrial Strength. Dan Call opens fast super reactor followed by War Factory, while Latex grabs both oil derricks, gets a mecha bay, and produces tangoos. Both players go for a third ref and start poking with tanks. Latex moves out with a big tsunami tank force and manages to make some headway, but Dan Call drives out the Empire Menace. As a second attack moves in, Latex splits off a few chopper VXs to clear up the war factory of Dan Call. Dan Call is forced to rebuild and goes for hammer tanks and a Tesla Trooper army with MiG support. With clear skies and four guns blazing, Dan Call closes in and Latex throws in the towel. Game 8 takes us to Infinity Isle with Eminence versus Waft the Wolf. Eminence opens 3 ref before Mecha and heads to the center ridge with his MCV. Eminence tries to wall swag, but it gets knocked down and Wolf rushes in. Eventually, Wolf takes down the oil derrick for his troubles. Wolf takes a third and goes for some harassment while Eminence finishes his wall swag. It's constant action from both sides as they're attacking and defending. As Eminence goes for Tier 3, he discovers Walf is already there. Walf makes a deep run through Eminence's base, destroying the Mecha Bay, lots of harvesters, and almost the MCV. But a Wave Force artillery and some good control cleans up the attack. Eminence macros back up and puts everything he's got into a front push. Walf can't hold the line in this game between teammates ends in sadness for Walf the Wolf. Game 9 is on Fire Island with Empire Joels and Allied Vindies. Joels opens heavy infantry and grabs both oil derricks while Vindies gets two riptides but can't push out. 
Joles charges forward and manages to clean up a refinery in an airfield but suffers heavy infantry losses. Vindy's rebuilds and stabilizes as Joles establishes a fourth and attacks once more. With some careful control, Vindy's barely survives, but he's not out of the woods yet. Vindy's techs up to cryocopters, but Joles breaks through and kills another refinery. Vindy's holds on by fighting tooth and nail and finally scores a critical spy bribe of two tsunami tanks and lands a cryoblast. Fast forward to Eureka Omega smashing through Vindy's base while his army tears up Joles' expansions, and another spy makes a wise investment while an assault destroyer crushes the Empire MCV. Eureka goes cold, but it's not enough as a single Yari minisub destroys the last building of Vindy's and Joles takes a clutch victory. Our final match takes us to Pool Party with Allies Awesome A and Soviet Dan Call versus the Allied team of Vindy's and Goldie. Early Riptides are the strategy for the Allied team as they push back the infantry of Awesome A and Dan Call. But Dan Call won't have any of that as he pushes in with a sickle bullfrog combo and locks down Goldie while AA pushes Vindy's with infantry and his MCV. Awesome A loses his MCV but he keeps Vindy's distracted while Dan Call hammers away at Goldie. The Hammer Tanks then turn north to double team on Vindy's. Hammer Tanks and Bullfrogs assist the Allied infantry in tearing up Vindy's base as Vindy's counterattacks with what air forces he has. Goldie rebuilds on the water as Dan Call trashes his main, and soon Vindy's joins Goldie out on the water. The Allied brethren hope against hope that their small armies can harass AA and Dan Call to death, but after Dan Call captures Vindy's MCB, all hope is gone and they leave to fight another day. And that's your 10 for this episode. Hey everybody, it's Nod Soldier Girl here, and we're finally back to announce our contest winners for the Show Us Your CNC Contest. First place goes to the CNC Minecraft crew for their hard work on a renegade based Minecraft map. Next up is Cad C TV and his CNC 64 Let's Play series, covering both factions. A lot of time and work went into it. Definitely worth a look. And last up is The Brotherhood by Einjahar12. Also, we'd like to congratulate all of our winners, but that's not all. We're going to make up the honorable mentions here. For everybody else who, yes, you didn't get a prize, but we want to show you that you have a prize in our heart. So, first up goes to Flo Kite Wolf with Kane's Preference. Then we have some anti-GDI graffiti from Tesla 7 Zap. and Christopher Freitag showing off his Orca Bomber made of model magic. So I want to say thanks to everybody who participated, everybody who sent in something to show us that you still care about CNC, and we still wouldn't be doing this without you. So this is Nod Soldier Girl turning it over to Cybert. Thanks everyone! Thanks NSG, and to finish off our fan art section, we've got one more honorable mention, which is Aggressive Panda, who submitted these four images. All right, and these next two are not actually for the fan art contest, but they were pretty sweet nonetheless. We've got Tiberium Trooper from B.R. Artemis and Dawn of the Brotherhood from Zipfells. And that wraps up another episode of Community Battlecast Primetime, guys. Thank you guys for sticking with us so long and waiting patiently for us. We really do appreciate it. And as always, if you have any news, mods, or fan art you want to share with these guys, you can reach Nod Soldier Girl and Cyber at their respected emails, and we'll see you guys on the battlefield.